All right, so in this video, I'm just gonna do a quick little video on just some of the general kind of moving around and using modeler settings. So you have a few different keys to get between selecting points, primitives, edges, and groups. So if I wanted to say, select any of these objects and get into their soft level, in normal Houdini, I'd have to dive into these nodes, dive out. Uh, so if I was in the Craig, for example, and I wanted to get to the pig, I would have to hop out and then hop back into the pig stop. Uh, now in Modeler, you can just double click on stuff and it will bring you to that object. So, and if you want to get out of SOPS context, you can just double click in empty space and then that's going to pop you back up to the object context. So if I double click, so one is going to be your points. Two is going to be edges. Three is going to be your primitives or polygons. Double click to go back out to object level. Um, double click to go on this guy. If I go four, and you can see that we can select different parts of him. Three for polygons, two for edges, one for points. You might be used to, I think it's control mouse, I mean, not <laughs> control space in standard Houdini to kind of snap the viewport to a certain thing. But in modeler, while you're rotating, just hold shift and it'll snap to whatever the closest uh, orthographic frame is. You don't have to hit anything to get out of it. You just keep rotating in a different direction. So that's a very quick way to snap the viewport. If I want to center on objects in standard Houdini, I think that's space D in here, it's going to be a uh, control space. And if I want to uh, frame everything that's inside the scene, I would hit shift space. And you can see all of these functions here if you forget in the uh, view drop down but we'll just go through them just so you can see what they do. If uh, say, for example, I hop into this rubber toy, you'll see this isolate and isolate is going to essentially in standard Houdini, I think it would be the uh, display uh, ghosted or, or don't display <laughs> ghosted or show all. So uh, it's going to uh, just show this guy, which I actually think it works at the uh, object level too, I guess. Um, so yeah, so, I want uh, to just isolate that uh, character, whatever you're working on, I again, to just reveal everything else again. Taking this further, you can double click on an object, I think you hit I, and then if I selected a bunch of faces, I could go Shift I, and that's actually going to just isolate our selection. And that's not deleting anything. Like that is still there. If I, uh, I think probably if I Shift I again, it's gonna unisolate it. So, so next, a very standard part of Modeler is that the middle mouse button is always going to be the edit kind of function. So if I just hold the middle mouse button, I can just basically completely manipulate stuff and just kind of push it in space. If you want to lock it to a uh, kind of axis, you can shift middle mouse button click to drag left and right, or you can control middle mouse button click to drag up and down. And then another feature is if I uh, middle mouse button click to start moving something, and then after I already did that, I hit shift, it switches the mode from edit to uh, this kind of edge slide here. And this might be more apparent if I actually do edges. So I'll press two and then click the middle mouse button, shift, and now I can slide the edge. And I don't believe that you actually have to have things selected, you can just hover. So you don't have to actually click and limit your selection here. And then to hop back up to the main level, I'll just double mouse click. Moving things around is a little bit different also. So if I was to select this, you can still hit enter and then get your standard movement. But if you wanted to just use the hotkeys, uh, you could click a mesh and then W to move, E is rotate, R is scale. W, move, E, rotate, R, scale. Hit three to go into the poly selection, kind of select a little line here. Period is gonna be to grow your selection comma is going to be to shrink it. And then let's say I wanted to just select, I wanted to turn this into point selection. So uh, control one, it is control one, you can actually see it's still selected, turn this shader off just so it's easy to see. Okay, so I select this, I grow it a little bit. And then uh, let's say I want to turn this into edges, I would do control two, and it's going to turn the selection into edges. If I didn't want to do that, uh, I could just control Z to back out. Control F, I mean, <laughs> Control 4 is going to give me the shells. So this little asterisk guy is uh, going to be your edge loop. 
but uh, it, it only works if you have uh, at least you have to have at least two primitives or points or something selected because it doesn't know what direction to cast this edge loop from so if I do that and then I press the little asterisk guy under the escape uh, then it'll build it that direction if I select these two guys and then if I hit 2 to pop into the edge mode you can use little asterisk guy to make these loops here if say I wanted to do the opposite where I wanted to select the edges going this way I could uh, do control plus the little asterisk guy and that's going to do it in the opposite direction almost like a stitch pattern okay and then in this next selection if i for example wanted to just grab the outside of this little selection i have here i could go shift at symbol and so let's shift plus at and it's going to give you the edge uh, loop around your selection you can do this with polygons shift at or you can do this with points shift at it does work with edges too so there's also some new controls for kind of moving around selections so the actual just arrow keys now can move your selection in directions so if i have this guy selected i can just you can see i'm just pressing these arrow keys in the viewport and moving this around Aside from being able to move around like this, if I hold shift and go in one of those directions, it's going to add that to my selection. So let's say I want to add the next continuous. So I'll keep shift forward. And then maybe I want to move this direction, add a little bit of that. Uh, maybe I want to move down, back. You can see how now if I don't hold shift, I can move this whole thing around. All right, and last thing is if we want to change any of these hotkeys, we can go to the UI drop down here and go hotkey editor. And then scrolling through, you'll see a list of all of the hotkeys on the keyboard and the pen slash mouse. And if you want to change it, you can see up here, it says double click to set the hotkey control plus double click to clear it. So uh, I'm going to do that for the, un, uh, the redo function because I hate control plus Y. So I will just control double click to show the clear. And now it's empty. And then if I double click, I can do control shift Z. Uh, and I think I'm okay with overriding that. And then I will export this as hotkeys. And then I will load from custom user hotkeys. And then let me just test this. And if I control undo, control shift uh, Z, and uh, it looks like it's all working. So uh, yeah, I think that's. The basis of it, um, and then again, if you want to hop out a modeler, you just click and unclick this little modeler shelf tool. I hope this helped, and uh, I'll see you guys in some later videos.